In this video, we'll tackle two examples working with the method of integrating factors for solving first order linear differential equations. So our first logical step in uh, working through this is to get the product rule form set up on one side of the equation. So I will go ahead and move the 25 over 700 minus 15 T over, and that'll be multiplied by Y. And that's got to equal one. Okay, so I already I see kind of this f prime f structure. Whoops, and then this must be part of uh, g prime over here. But the issue is, I uh, obviously this is a one, so g can't be one, and the derivative of one is certainly not that right there. So what I need to do is I need to multiply through by this uh, integrating factor of sorts. And so when I multiply through on both sides, I get mu dy dt plus 25 over 700 minus 15 t times mu times y equals 1 times mu. And so I don't know what mu is yet, but I'm going to try to work through a relationship here. So I know that's going to be my g, which means that 25 over 700 minus 15 t times mu, that must be my g prime. That allows me to find mu now because I know that the derivative of g with respect to t has to equal g prime and g is mu. So the derivative of mu has to equal g prime. Well, g prime has got to be this 25 over 700 minus 15 t times, uh, times mu. And so now I see that uh, this is this is a separable differential equation right here. It's a uh, my g of t and h of y if, or h of mu if you want to look at it that way. So I can actually use separation of variables on this, and I get one over mu d mu is equal to twenty five over seven hundred minus fifteen t dt. And now I'll integrate the. Uh, Left hand side is simply the natural log of the absolute value of mu. The right hand side is if I factor out a 25 um, by the rule number, let's see, number four on an integral sheet, we have that one over something of the form ax plus b equals one over a natural log of ax plus b. Well, we have the integral of one over, if I write this as negative 15t, uh, plus 700, then I can clearly see what my a and b are. And so that should equal 1 over negative 15 natural log of negative 15 t plus 700. Okay, so that's the that's uh, what that integral is going to work out to be. And so I get, uh, well, 1 over negative 15 natural log of, I'll just leave it as 700 minus 15 t absolute value. Okay, I don't need a plus C because the goal here is simply to find mu, the integrating factor. Now, it might be tempting to exponentiate at this point, but we've actually got to be careful not to do that yet. One of the properties of logarithms is that the log of x to the a power is equal to a times the natural log of x, which means that a times the natural log of x is can also be rewritten as the natural log of x to the a. That's critical here because I have this coefficient of 25 negative 15 and 25 negative 15 if I divide both of those by 5 I actually get um, negative uh, let's see 1.4 I believe yeah, I get 5 negative 5 thirds negative 5 thirds which is uh, I'm sorry that's actually gonna make it uglier. Let's just work with negative 5 thirds. So I get the natural log of mu is equal to the natural log of 700 minus 15 t all raised to the negative 5 thirds power. Okay, so uh, now I can exponentiate and I get that mu is equal to 700 minus 15 t to the negative 5 thirds power. And now I have my integrating factor mu. So I can come over here and put that back in. And I have 700 minus 15t uh, to the negative 5 thirds 
times uh, dy dt plus 25 time over 700 minus 15t times mu, which is the 700 minus 15t to the negative 5 thirds, times y equals 1 times 700 minus 15t to the negative 5 thirds. Okay, well, now I can condense this part back into the product rule, and I should be able to just visually verify that if I take the derivative of this, that I do in fact get uh, this quantity over here. And I won't actually verify it here, but rest assured, we, we have correctly found g, so that g prime is what we have left over here. So next I want to untangle this and write it as the derivative of f times g is equal to 700 minus 15t to the negative 5 thirds. And uh, so f is my y, so y times 700 minus 15t to the negative 5 thirds. And the derivative of that has to equal the right-hand side. I'm going to skip to the next page here. So I'm going to integrate both sides. The integral of the derivative of y times 700 minus 15t to the negative 5 thirds. That equals 700 minus 15t to the negative 5 thirds. Okay, oh, excuse me, the integral, both with respect to t. Okay, so integral of a derivative is simply the original function, uh, this guy here, to the negative 5 thirds. And of course I have to be careful here because I, I have a quantity raised to the negative 5 thirds. So I'm going to have to use um, some sort of substitution. And in this case, if I use uh, substitution to integrate this, uh, let's see, uh, I can go ahead and pick, let's see, how about... And I thought I'd be able to find a formula on the formula sheet. However, um, this is a perfectly acceptable uh, form formula to add to one's integral sheet. Um, I have something of this form where I need to integrate, uh, in particular, negative 15t plus 700 to the negative 5 thirds. So according to this, uh, the integral should be 1 over a times n plus 1. Okay, so... 1 over a, in this case a is negative 15, times n plus 1, well n is negative 5 thirds plus 1, and that's multiplied by the original negative 15t plus 700 to the negative 5 thirds plus 1, which is going to be, let's see, if I add 1 to that, that'll make it negative 2 thirds. So, uh, and then a plus c, of course, on the end. So I get y times 700 minus 15t to the negative 5 thirds equals, and now I can do a little bit of work here to clean this up. Uh, that's going to be 15 divided by 3 comes out to be th uh, 5. That's going to be 25. 1 over 25. Um, one tenth, I believe. If I take, uh, yes, um, one tenth times quantity negative 15t plus 700 to the negative two thirds plus c. Okay, so now that I have that, I can officially uh, finally isolate y, divide both sides by this quantity here, and then divide also by that quantity on this side. 700 minus 15t to the negative 5 thirds. And so uh, I get negative 2 thirds, negative 5 thirds on top and bottom. And that will, let's see here, cancel out to become 1 tenth times negative 15t plus 700 to the first power. Um, negative two-thirds minus negative five-thirds is minus two-thirds plus five-thirds. And negative two-thirds plus five-thirds is three-thirds, which is one. And then I get plus C times 700 minus 15T. 15T to the negative five-thirds. 
And there we have it. Um, I could simplify this a little bit more. I could distribute in the one tenth, and I see again that I have kind of this uh, rational uh, ish, radical ish function over here. Uh, very complicated looking, and I have a linear piece and I have a constant piece, and so that's our solution for this problem. So let's take a look at one more. So obviously the integration can be quite challenging as well as the actual process of walking uh, walking through it. So let's uh, take a look at one more. And in this case, we have something that appears cleaner at first, negative 2ty plus 4e to the negative t squared. And we're going to try to satisfy this initial condition here as well. So similarly, we're going to move the a of t term y over. So we get dy dt plus 2t times y equals 4e to the negative t squared. I'm going to multiply through by mu uh, on both sides and kind of place them where I need them so that what I have now is f prime g. This whole thing has got to be g prime and this uh, y is f. And so now I know that the derivative of mu has to be 2 times t times mu. And so I can use separation of variables. I get 1 over mu d mu equals 2t dt, and this is a nice integral. I get uh, the natural log of mu is equal to t squared, and then I get mu is equal to e to the negative t squared. All right, so there it is. And so now I can uh, replace mu with that quantity, e to the negative t squared dy dt plus 2t e to the negative t squared times y equals 4 e to the negative t squared times e to the negative t squared, coincidentally. And so now I know that this is g f prime, this is g prime, and this is f. And so I can put these pieces together. This is the derivative of f times g, which is y times e to the negative t squared. And here I can simplify it a little bit. I can write this as 4e to the negative 2t squared, since I can add exponents. And I have a negative t squared plus a negative t squared. And now I can integrate both sides with respect to t. And so that leaves me with uh, y e to the negative t squared dt equals uh, 4 times the integral of e to the negative 2t squared dt. I'm sorry, I think I made a, a little typo back here. This is not negative, this is a positive t squared. That makes things a lot cleaner. Um, positive, positive, and then this guy's a positive as well. So actually this term cancels out because I have e to the t squared times e to the negative t squared. So basically I'm on this side I'm just integrating uh, the integral of 4 dt, a constant, much nicer, few. That was going to get ugly real quick. And so now I can integrate that with respect to, oh, sorry, that's already integrated. That's the integral of the derivative, and the integral of 4 dt is 4t plus the constant, and I still have y e to the negative t squared. Let me finish that up here. So then I divide both sides by e to the negative t squared uh, divided by e to the negative t squared and what I can do here is write this as y equals 4t times e to the t squared plus c times e to the t squared and we're done. Now all we need to do is to satisfy the initial condition. Let me move up here. So 3 equals 4 times 0 e to the 0 squared plugging in 0 for t and 3 for y, plus c e to the 0. And this gives me 3 equals, well, that term is 0, so I'm just left with 3 equals c. And now I can come in and punch in my c value, which I know is now the constant, uh, the, the constant value 3. Oh, that got messy quick, didn't it? So I can write in, pencil in, that value of 3, and now I've solved the differential equation and satisfied the initial condition.